Hey everyone, this is Pirate 22 and welcome back to our episode of Let's Play Magic Duels Origins. In that last episode, we were fin just finishing off basically the tutorial campaign of Magic Origins. We were finishing off with Gideon Jira or Kytheon as he's known here in the prequel. Well, basically, slight spoiler, a lot of these stories are going to be the uh, Planeswalkers, well, as they're all known, in uh, basically within their youth. So as they kind of get of age and uh, how they came to be. So yeah, we are in the last uh, match of Gideon's campaign. So, without further ado, the ground shudders and the putrid smell of rot fills your nostrils. The shadow of Erebus's titan falls across you and your irregulars. You raise your spear, and it radiates the light of the sun, and the titan bellows ferociously. You charge forward anyway. Let's start the duel showdown. Yeah, that's a big titan. Let's see what we can do against him. Here we go. Versus Airbus's Titan. And we get to play first. And again, we start with this hand, so not much we can do about it. Go planes and play the Vanguard. Not much else we can do. At least we got the first turn move. Yeah, even though I played this, I, a lot of times I forget what kind of hands the opponent has, so it looks like he has a black, at least a black, or black part of his deck anyway. He may have other colors. It recommends this one. Honor of the Pure. I forgot to go through the card series, so I'll kind of review them now. Honor of the Pure. It, white creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Now, that actually is very handy. So any creature, as it says, that are of a white color, like single white, get boosted. Very nice. Now, it wants me to play it, which I could do right now because I have a creature out. Or I could put this creature out, the Swift Claw, to make him stronger the next turn. This is a nice one. Whenever this guy attacks, that Benelish Veteran... He's a 3 cost, 2 of any color and 1 white. Whenever a veteran attacks, it gets plus 1, plus 1 on the turn. So I'm going to go to the recommendation. I'm going to put Honor to Pure out. That's to automatically make any creatures I, any white creatures I get automatically stronger. And we'll see what the Titan can do. I see as an enchantment goes in the corner of the of the uh, play field there. So it's kind of always active. Now there are cards out there that can destroy enchantments. You gotta be wary of that, viewers. Now the computer is playing Brain Maggot. When Brain Maggot when Brain Maggot enters the battlefield, target opponent, well which is me, reveals his or her hand and you choose a non-land card from it. Exile that card until Brain Maggot leaves the battlefield. Now this is another ability, viewers, that we haven't seen yet, we haven't come across. Exile. As the album's going to read the description. If an ability exiles a card, it's removed from the battlefield to the side. An exile card isn't... isn't a permanent... isn't a permanent because it's not on the battlefield. And it isn't in the graveyard, it's kind of in a limbo. Unless an ability returns an exile card to play, it stays exiled until the game ends. So basically what this means is I'm not have to pick I'm gonna pick a card, one of these two cards here, and exile it, and I won't get it back until this maggot is gone from the from the field. So I'm probably going to lose a veteran. Well, I'm not sure. I don't know what I want to get rid of yet. Okay. It was automatic. Okay. Never mind then. 
least I was able to get the Honor of the Pure out first. Auction, let's see. Yeah. It took care of the... It removed the Swift Claw. Okay. They chose. Okay. Play land. Now I can play the Veteran. Uh, let's see. This one requires five. Won't have enough and even the one. Flying Double Strike. Yeah, I'm going to attack because this guy can't possibly, uh... If he chooses a block, he's going to lose the card. If he chooses not to block, he's going to take the damage. Nothing else I can do, so it's their turn. And they're not going to attack, but they are going to play another card on their second main. A Grim Guardian at three cost is an enchant creature. So, Constellation. Whenever a Grim Guardian or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life. Oh, so it's an enchanted creature, never mind. So, whenever an enchant... But if we place more enchantments later in the game, each one I'm going to lose a life. So... That could be nasty. Luckily, I'm far out of the head. It's not that much of a difference right now. So I got four lands, and I'm actually able to play the Griffin. So I will do so. But at this point, it actually still wants me to attack. It wants me to attack with my 3-3. Three -three. Because he's actually going to be a 4 creature when he attacks. I agree, I'll leave this guy for the defense because he can't penetrate this 1-4, but this guy can. Now, does he choose to block? Nope, he's going to take the damage. If I get a land card next turn, I guess I can put this double strike out. <laughs> that would be really awesome. What will he do? He does nothing. He plays a card. Ooh. To four cost. Fate Untraveler. Oh, Fate Unraveler. Whenever an opponent draws a card, Fate Unraveler deals one damage to that player. Ouch. So that means every time it's my turn, I lose a life. Or if I had any abilities that would make me draw a card, I'd lose a life. Ouch! Luckily, I have enough life to stave off until I should be okay at the moment. See, I drew a card and I lost a life. But I can play this one. Armored Ascension. Enchanted Creature. No, Enchanted Enchantment Aura, rather. Four costs, so... Enchanted creature gets plus one plus one for each planes you control and has flying. Um, yes. I'm going to enchant this guy. I just won the game, viewers. Because he can't block, and I'm going to do 10 damage. Confirm attack. I'm going to do actually more than that, more than 10, I'm going to do 12. He can't do nothing because he has no no more mana left, and even if he had counter cards, I doubt he wouldn't have enough. Yeah. So this was supposed to be the challenging fight, viewers. Not very challenging, if I do say so myself. But again, this is more or less a, a tutorial, so uh, not much way to steam. Grief stricken over the death of your... Oh. Okay, this is a slight spoiler of yours because normally there'd be a cut, there'd be a video cutscene here. But since I've already played it, I've already beaten it before, the video doesn't play automatically. I'm going to show you the, the video in the minute, viewers. Yeah. Grief stricken over the death of your comrades. Your planeswalker spark ignites, sending you to Bant. You discover a realm of, of chivalry and you're inspired to walk the path to knighthood. 
You take the name Gideon Gira and you seek redemption. Yes, we have completed his campaign. I'm now going to go ahead and go to the help and options. Go to the settings and go to the video gallery. And I can show you his video here. So I'm going to be quiet during this part. I'm actually also going to uh, increase the volume as well. Alright, so there's his video viewers. Yeah, I was kind of a bit quiet. Wanted to let you guys see that for yourselves. I'll put the volume down a little bit. Okay. Now, yeah, if I do say this for myself, that's pretty impressive uh, grab, like pretty impressive little small cutscene there. And as you can see, the Titan kind of killed everyone except Gideon. He kind of was able to take the hit and uh, not get killed with a blast and he became a planeswalker he got he teleported to another world another realm so yeah that's gideon's story that's gideon's uh, campaign so in the next episode of let's play magic duels origins we're gonna go ahead and do jace's story jace bellerin and uh yeah with that this is pride 22 saying thank you guys so much for watching any comments, please leave them in the section below. It definitely help me a lot. Leave a thumbs up. Give a, uh, give a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel. be much appreciated. And I'll see you guys for the next episode. See you guys later. Bye.